In the 1900s, there was a lot of speculation that certain chemicals were mutagenic and thus carcinogenic, so they caused cancers, but they w there wasn't really a way to test for this. There wasn't a way to say, you know, you didn't want to inject a, a person with a chemical and thus give them cancer, and you still weren't really sure if that was the cancer. So even if you did this test on a mouse, if you just injected them with this mutagen or what you thought was a mutagen, um, and they develop cancer, there's still no way of uh, knowing for sure that it was a cancer-causing mutagen or a mutagen at all. So this guy named Bruce Ames in 1975, who was a bacterial geneticist, made his own kind of uh, method that would test for whether something was a mutagen or not. So he was growing salmonella, which is a bacteria here, and he had two different strains. So he had one that was a His Plus, which is just a wild type. And wild type just means that it's a non-mutant form. It's the kind that you normally find in the wild. And then he had a mutant form. So this one was unable to grow on a minimal medium plate. So a, med a medium Petri dish just means that there's not a lot of nutrients. You have to be able to uh, digest or enzymatically digest this histidine. So if you're a histidine mutant, you can't unless the colonies here will not grow. So what he did was he had these his mutants and he would kind of put his chemical, so if you just draw a little flask here, he would just pour his chemical into this petri dish and he would see if this chemical was able to cause the uh, cause a, a mutant change from this his mutant to a his wild, uh, wild type, so a his plus, which would then cause that these colonies to grow. So these colonies would now grow and they would thrive because they've been changed from this mutant and been reversed and turned into the wild type non-mutant form. So that would mean that this chemical is a mutagen. And what you also would do, because you need to make sure that it is what you think it is that's causing these mutagen changes is he would have a um, another colony here that he didn't put the chemical on and just to see the chance of there being a spontaneous mutation that allows them to grow, right? Because bacteria divide really quick and the chances of them getting mutation are a little bit higher. So maybe you would have one or two colonies that grew here. So you'd have to minus those two colonies out of the colonies that grew here. So you might have a few that didn't grow, obviously. But if the overwhelming, or there's a, a large number of colonies that grew larger and they were able to digest the histidine, chances are that this was a muti mutagen um, or carcinogenic uh, compound. Now, the question now was that the, the chemicals that he would often use, um, carcinogens were often implicated to cause cancer after they've been enzymatically and uh, detoxified and, and digested in our livers. So what he did was he took the liver of a rat and he homogenized it to release its enzymes. So if we draw a bunch of rat cells right here from the liver, he would homogenize it. So we have this, and then he'd homogenize it so it's just a bunch of enzymes like this. And then he'd have his test compound, so this liquid here that he's testing to see if it's a mutagen. And then he would put it, or he'd mix these two things together, so mix these two things together, put it into this petri dish, and then you have a mixture of these two, so the enzymes from the liver and the compound that you're trying to test. And you put it in this Petri dish with the colonies. So if you add the salmonella bacteria that are unable to grow without the added histidine in the culture medium, and then you count the number of bacterial colonies that have undergone mutation enabling to grow with the, uh, without the histidine. So right here, you have these colonies here that have been growing. So you count the number of colonies that grew and that that would uh, indicate that the enzymes digested these normally non-mutant forms of, or the, sorry, right here, the uh, non-mutant forms of 
this chemical and turn it into a carcinogenic um, compound. So what the AMES test uh, or AMES assay actually revealed is that a number of known carcinogens were also actively mutagenic. So the correlations that AMES found is that chemicals were potently mutagenic were also powerful car carcinogens. So they actually found that it was a five order of magn magnitude potency that if it was a mutagen, then it was highly carcinogenic. So that gave the indication that a lot of cancers came from mutations in the genes.